I was asked recently why it's possible to get an electric shock from the neutral when one or more circuits has a shared neutral. Why does it happen and what steps can be taken to prevent it happening? And another post asked, why is it dangerous to have shared neutrals? So let's take a look at this. A couple of rules that I've used in this video as I've not used conventional conductor colours, brown and blue, or red and black, for example. Instead, I've changed the colour of the conductor to red if it is 230 or 240 volts, and blue for a conductor at zero volts or ground potential. This way, it's hoped you will be able to see where the danger voltages are in a circuit, depending on which switch is turned on or turned off. Red indicates a conductor at 230 volts, probably closer to 240 volts when measured. Blue indicates that the conductor is at or close to zero volts, and the earth is left off most of the drawings for clarity. The box shows a switch. With the switch open in the off position, the 230 volts stops at the switch. But with the switch closed, in the on position, current can flow through the switch and the output becomes 230 volts. We should begin with a normal fault-free circuit in the on state, the switch in the closed position. From the incoming supply up to the load is 230 volts nominal, the line conductor. Since the load will be the highest impedance or resistance in the circuit, the conductors after the load, the neutral, will be at or close to zero volts, since they eventually end up connected to the incoming earth. Now the same lighting circuit in the off position, with the switch open. From the incoming supply up to the switch will be at 230 volts nominal. The line voltage stops at the open switch. After the open switch, everything will be at or close to zero volts. Taking the lamp out will have the same effect as turning the switch off. Removing the lamp puts a break in the circuit. With the switch in the closed or on position and the lamp out, 230 volts will pass through the switch and voltage will be present at the lamp holder where it stops. Everything after the lamp holder will be at zero volts. A break in the wiring will stop the lamp from functioning for the same reasons. A break in any conductor will stop the circuit from working as intended. In this case, 230 volts is present along the line conductor, through and including the lamp, and all the way to the break. Everything after the break will be at zero volts. If there is no route to earth, then everything before the break will be at 230 volts or line voltage. Moving on to shared neutrals now, do the circuits work and how can they become dangerous? Beginning with two separate fault-free circuits, each with their own circuit breaker and switch, an upstairs circuit and a downstairs circuit. The two switches will work independently of each other. SW1 controls the upstairs light and SW2 will control the downstairs light. Now, a loft light has been added with a switch on the landing at the top of the stairs. Or, it could be a landing light, as you might find in some older installations that do not have two-way lighting on the stairs. I came across the loft light example a few years ago, so I will continue to use it here. A line conductor at 230 volts is taken from under the floorboards, where there is a convenient connection to the downstairs lighting. This goes to the new switch, SW3, and then into the loft to the new loft light. What to do with the neutral? There is a very handy neutral nearby from the upstairs lights, and this will do. The installer was sure it would be OK to share neutrals with another lamp holder or ceiling rose. The job was done, and it works. Check the lights. The lights all work independently. The upstairs lights go on and off, 
No problem. Test the loft light. On off. On off. All OK. The loft light works fine. Controlled by SW3 on the landing. And the downstairs lights. On off. On off. All is OK. Now move on a year or two and we need to carry out some work on the upstairs lighting. We isolate the circuit to SW1 by removing the line conductor from the circuit breaker number 1 and the neutral conductor from the earth bar. Now we can start work. It all looks OK. But is it? What will happen if we, or someone else, now energises the loft light on SW3? What influence on our safety will the shared neutral have? Are we going to be safe working on the upstairs lighting, unaware of this shared neutral? Look at what happens to the lighting conductors when SW3 is switched on, put into the closed position. SW3 is turned on, there's no route to neutral, so SW3 circuit and SW1 circuit all become live at 230 volts. It's the shared neutral that carries the 230 volts into your once isolated upstairs lighting circuit. You are no longer isolated. Everything is energised. And notice that the loft light does not light up either, but your eyes do. There are a couple of solutions to this problem, two ways of making the installation safe. Reassign SW3 neutral to SW2 ceiling rows or to the neutral bar. Now. SW3 belongs entirely to circuit breaker number 2 and the upstairs lights can be safely isolated. Whatever happens with the loft light is not going to affect the upstairs lighting circuits. Alternatively, reassign the 230 volt line conductor that goes to SW3 back to the circuit breaker number 1, the upstairs circuit, so that the line and neutral are both controlled by the same breaker. Now, isolating CB1 will isolate the upstairs lights and the loft light. With many domestic installations being upgraded to RCBO consumer units and prior to that dual RCD boards, there can be some unexpected results from shared neutrals. A friend called me one day. He had just installed an RCBO consumer unit in a bungalow that previously had only one RCD protecting the whole board. Meticulous in his wiring, all the circuits worked as intended except for when he operated the light switch for the utility cupboard. I was only 10 minutes drive away and a friend in need is a friend indeed, as they say. It soon became obvious that the utility light was split between two of the new RCBOs, which we soon discovered to be the kitchen lights and the garage lights. In this case, it was not a problem for the kitchen lights or any lights on that half of the dwelling, whilst the utility light was off, they worked fine. And the other half of the lighting circuits worked fine too. The garage lights or any others could be turned on and off at will and nothing tripped. The problem came about when the utility room light switch was operated. Both lighting RCBOs tripped and all the lights went out. Turn off the utility room light switch and reset the RCBOs and all was OK. The lights came back on until the utility room light switch was operated again and both RCBOs tripped again. You may find that sometimes only one RCBO or RCD trips but often it will be both. The problem was easily put right. We reassigned the utility room neutral, SW3, to the same RCBO used by the garage circuit, which is switch 2 and RCBO2, and all was OK. It would have been possible to reassign the line conductor for SW3, the utility room, to the RCBO for the kitchen lights. Either way would have worked. A quick recap. Safe isolation checks are so important for your own safety. For any circuit, a break in the circuit conductors could result 
in the whole circuit being energised all the way to the point of fault. An isolated circuit with a shared neutral will become live if the shared circuit is energised. When upgrading or replacing a consumer unit, the RCBOs or RCDs will trip if the circuit with the shared neutral is energised. For the shared circuit, reassign either the neutral or the line conductor so that the line and neutral are both on the same RCD or RCBO. And always keep notes and make drawings of what you find and what you do. And make use of the camera on your phone before moving wires. If you have a photo, you can always get back to where you started. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful, informative and interesting. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are always adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.